Hey there. Hey, how you doing? Uh, my name is Zach, and uh, I'll be showing you guys how to use Cubicle. Uh, the very first start to using Cubicle, what you should understand, and how to approach it. So, I have Cubicle Voxel Editor on Steam. Uh, as you can see, I've logged 479 hours on it so far, but I have a lot more when it wasn't from when it wasn't on Steam. Either way, we're going to launch it, and uh, this is how it launches. When, it, when, you, when you first launch the tool, this is what it is. So, there's going to be an open learning resources, that, which goes right to the site which pops up like this, and there's tutorials there that they provide and how to understand everything. So you can, if you're more of a text person, you can read there instead of watching my tutorial. And uh, yeah, so now, uh, aside from that, there is a open, t open uh, test file. So this, these test files are all open resources. They're all things that you can make use of, edit however you want, and then post somewhere, whatever. I highly recommend, though, to simply use these for, as a way to understand a tool just so you get how to use cubicle or or as little bits of inspiration for design styles and stuff uh what we're going to do is we're going to open up the deer since that's the main uh, that we're, it's easy to work off of something rather than create from scratch and then i'll explain how to create from scratch with the tools provided but uh before that there's also the forum so if you ever if you want to if you have any issues or anything or you want to just go to it either you can go to the steam forums that's fine or you can open up this, the website forums both are being checked at all times then you can follow them on twitter that's what you want to do. Follow them on Twitter. They update it frequently, and they retweet your stuff if they uh, if uh, you mention them and say, "Hey, this was made with Cubicle." They'll retweet it, which is sweet. And uh, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and open up the Deer, and we're gonna maximize the space. So uh, as you can see, this is uh, the Deer that was made by Ben Weatherall, and he's provided it. it's the Cubicle's uh, pretty much their like icon model, which is pretty sweet. And um, yeah, it's cool. Anyways, uh, so <laughs> the, all the tools, I'm going to explain all the tools above here. Uh, we're going to start off with the, the actual tool icons, the most readily available tools here, which is Move, Rectangle Tool. Rectangle Tool will be a sort of carving tool that, you'll, uh, that I'll explain, uh, explain later on. You'll have the Eyedrop Tool, which is to select, uh, select things, but then I'll, I'll actually show you guys a shortcut to using the Eyedrop Tool without actually even clicking on it. It's really useful, it's super convenient. And it's not even it's not even the eye eye icon. It's it's other things. Um, anyways, there's also the pencil tool, which is like a trace. Uh, it is not an additive tool or a reductive tool. It's just coloring. It's um, it's literally clicking cube for cube if you want to do a pixel art kind of thing. You have the attach voxel tool, which is this one very similar in design to the pencil tool icon, but it is that one is to add voxels to a scene, to add voxels to an uh, to an object rather. Because um, uh, I'll explain real quick. This is a scene. This is the object. To edit the object, you need to go in it by double clicking, and then from there you can edit the object however you like. Anyways, um, and then this is the eraser tools to re remove voxels, however you need, uh, however you see fit. You can remove them like that. Then you have the paint tool, which is, which is pretty much like the pencil tool, just a lot more fluid. You can just move around like this, and it'll, uh, it'll, it'll complete it for you. You can, uh, you can hold down Shift to draw straight lines. It's, it's very similar to the pencil tool. Some of you might find more uses uh, with that rather than the other. And if you want, uh, you can always look down at the bottom here. Uh, you can't see it right now. You'll, I'll show you in a moment. Just keep your eyes here. Now, when you're in a scene, you'll see that it shows exactly what shortcuts do. You can hold down Shift and click. Oh, OK. Shift click does paint line. And then you can see click and drag will paint the voxels. And then you can have control and drag, which is to paint a rectangle, which only paints a rectangle. Now, if I were to do click and drag with the pencil tool, it's actually going to create a box. It's it's a little bit additive, but I, I don't I honestly don't don't use it if you want to be additive. Don't use the pencil tool to be an additive artist. Anyways, and then there's so on and so forth. Uh, as you can see, one one of the the functions actually is Alt Click. So this is where the Eye Picker tool goes. Alt Click, and what that does is instead of hitting I to to activate the color picker, and and then click, uh, and then clicking on the pencil tool to click other things. And okay, I'm gonna go color now. What you can do is hold down the Alt key. So Alt is to actually use and move the scene. Holding on Alt and left click is to rotate. Holding on Alt and middle click is to move. Holding on Alt and right click is to zoom in and out. If you push forward and backwards, or you can scroll to zoom in and out. But hold, while holding out down Alt, you can also just click on a cube and you'll pick that color. If you look down here, you might, the color is constantly changing. You can pick whatever color you want, and then you can let go of the alt and start painting. Which is very convenient and very easy. That's what I use at all times. 
So anyways, then you have the bucket tool, which is obviously to fill in colors. Um, although, keep in mind, there's masking. So if ever you have... Uh, uh, there's masking, there's also contiguous. So contiguous, it's only it can paint the box, the, the color, uh, the voxels of that grouping, like everything that's attached to one another of the same color. Like the nose here, there's only whites there, there's no whites elsewhere, so it's, only, it's not going to attach. But if you turn off contiguous, it's going to paint all, everything white. Everything of that same color will be painted. Then you have the magic wand tool, which uh, again, with contiguous is the same. Uh, keep it on to select that one color, uh, the color in that one area, or click it uh, to uh, unclick it, and then click on the one color to select all of that color. It's very useful. But then the rectangle tool, like I was explaining, the rectangle tool, what that's used for is to cut. As you can see, you can highlight sections with the rectangle tool easily. Now, what I highly recommend is whenever you're using rectangle tool to work on the orthographic face. So just straight off, front, top, right, and how left, whatever. You should always work in one dimension. You shouldn't really, uh, well, two dimension, technically. You should always work in two dimension, never three when using rectangle tool, mostly because the rectangle tool can become very confusing when working like, when working like this. You're not sure which cubes are gonna, you're, you're gonna hit. You're not sure what exactly is gonna be removed when you're removing it. So you see like, hey, well, I wanted to get all the way through the neck, but I was at a bit of an angle, so it's not gonna, it's gonna dodge this one cube here. And like, you don't want that. So I highly recommend using the rectangle tool like this with or orthographic face. Anyways, we're gonna move out of the scene and to create an object, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go into the create section here. And you can create box, you can create sphere, doesn't matter, but when you create something, you're gonna get a little dialogue window, which explains, you can name the object if you want right away, if you have an idea for what the object is going to be. And then you can start giving it dimensions. Giving it, okay, I want it to be six wide or seven wide, and I'm gonna do a depth of eight. Then you can choose the base color. I just do white, mostly, and I'll explain why. Uh, the reason why you should do white is because you should never, at least with voxels, my recommendation is to never work with voxels right off the bat and start coloring. You should color at the end. First things first is to shape an object. Figure out the shape. It's, it's like a 3D modeling tool. You don't texture while you're modeling. You texture when you're done modeling the actual design. So you're going to want to do preview just to make sure that, okay, that's actually, yeah, that's, that's about the dimensions I want. And you hit OK when you're done. And then from there, you can't actually add anything. You're hitting these pencil tools, you can't add anything. It's like, oh crap, oh no, it's not. You can't add anything. Well, that's because you need to go into the matrix to start adding. But even then, you're still not able to add. Why is that? Because there's a limit to, um, the matrix actually dictates what is the editable space. To fix that, you can actually just hit the extend work area unit. This works both in the scene view and matrix view. So you can just extend the work area by five or by one, whichever you see fit. And you can see you have access now to the pencil tool it can finally add voxels and you can add that however you like now that's just basically what you should how you should understand the tool and matrix is our uh, matrices dictates what objects are created you can create as many as you want you can keep creating more boxes and that's fine and you can and you can start moving things around like this and then to duplicate an object, so say I want to make a secondary version of this, and then like if this is a foot, and I want to just duplicate the foot and put it on the other side, left and right, you can hold out control and just drag it. Again, this is all stuff that's seen down here. Like there's click object, which is it's, which is the thing, and then there's uh, control. Actually, no, that's not even it's not even there. It's not there. Well, I just taught you something. Uh, holding down control and then dragging an object using the move tool will duplicate it, which is very useful, and I use it all the time. I use it all the time to make variants. So if I want to do that, it's like, okay, I want to make a version that has box there. Okay, cool. Now we're going to go to move tool and move that. Okay, let's do another one. And we're going to go, whoop. And we're going to go like this. It's a minor bug. Um, and yeah, that's that. So this is the basics to understanding cubicle. Hopefully that helped. Um, I do plan on doing more. I'm going to try to organize myself a lot more so that you guys can easily figure things out. But uh, if there's any other questions, uh, just put in the, in the description, sorry, comment section below, tell me exactly what you want to learn, what, what tools you want to understand better, and I'll do a lot more in-depth uh, understanding of the tools. And I'm going to po be posting a sh very short tutorial explaining the favorites section and what tools I recommend as, uh, should be in the favorites bar. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another tutorial which explains the conversion, the translation from 
working in Magic of Voxel to then working in Cubicle. And then back to Magic Voxel if you want to do other things with it. So, um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. And, uh, yeah. Put comments, uh, like, subscribe, whatever, you know, and all that junk. And, uh, yeah. So let me, know what, uh, let me know what you need help with, and I will be happy to help you.